Hello everyone, today I've got another glorious game for you between Alpha Zero and Stockfish 8, played in 2018 London. And the main spectacular thing about this game is Alpha Zero's opening, where it sacrifices the pawns game so much activity in the middle game, and just really starts frustrating Black's pieces, and Black seriously loses coordination, and is forced into an exchange sacrifice. Again, in this game, Alpha Zero loves the two bishops, as you'll see, but it's mainly the opening that really interests me, and I'll show you it now. So. We get into a Queen's Indian with Alpha Zero White, Stockfish Black. Alpha Zero plays their typical move D4. After Knight to F6, Knight to F3, we're into this flexible system that Alpha Zero loves to play. And you know what? I think I'm going to start playing it myself. After E6, C4, B6, G3, and now Stockfish plays Bishop to A6, attacking the C4 pawn. And Queen C2 defends it by Alpha Zero. And now Stockfish plays quite an unusual move actually, it's not been seen in many games. C5 attacking D4. And I've looked at this variation in chess base and it's really rare. There's not many games that go into this variation and I've had a look online as well to see if there's any forums talking about it and there's barely any that go into this variation. In most forums most people recommend playing B3 here to protect C4. But now Alpha Zero plays a pawn sacrifice, quite an amazing move, they play D5 here. And Stockfish captures on d5, Alpha Zero recaptures, and Stockfish plays Bishop to b7 here. I'll just note that Black can't take it straight away because after Knight takes d5, there comes Queen e4 check, uh, and it's White's attacking the Knight on d5, and this Rook on a8 getting x raids, so Black can't go in for this. Instead, Stockfish plays Bishop b7 though, so attacking the pawn twice. And there's only been a handful of games that I've got this variation now. Another strong player decided to play e4 here to protect the pawn and play continued queen e7, bishop g2 and black took on e4, queen captures, knight captures and they castled and after bishop e7, rook e1, black played f5 and after knight c3 castles, white actually played knight d2 in this position and white has sacrificed the pawn but now has a very good game because black's pieces look very uncoordinated and this f5 pawn move looks really weird in this position, it's got to be said, and d7 looks really unusual as well, it looks quite weak. So black's structure isn't great, but amazing that alpha 0 now just completely ignores this d5 pawn and plays bishop g2, developing their piece. And stockfish now accepts, knight takes d5. Alpha 0 now continues developing the castle, stockfish plays bishop e7, and rook d1 from alpha 0. Knight c6, and of course, white can't capture this knight on d5 because after rook takes d5, black can play knight b4 and fork these two pieces, so white can't do this. Instead, alpha zero now played queen to f5, so now they're attacking this knight twice. Stockfish retreats their knight back to f6, and alpha zero now launches an assault. They play e4, dominating the center, uh, stopping black maybe from playing d5 as well which would actually consolidate their position. So that's a clever move to play. Stockfish plays g6, attacking the queen, and the queen drops back to at queen f4. Stockfish castles now, and e5 is played by alpha zero, so now they have quite a good attack going, and trying to wreck black's structure. I think importantly as well, it stops any d6 move. So this d7 pawn is really weak now. Stockfish plays knight to h5, attacking the queen, and now queen g4 is played. So, attacking this pawn now twice on d7. And after knight g7, amazingly, alpha 0 doesn't take on d7 here. They just get on with development, they play knight to c3. Stockfish plays rook to e8 and still offers this pawn up. But alpha 0 just isn't interested in recapturing the sacrificed pawn. So why is this? Well, after queen takes d7, queen recaptures and rook takes d7, maybe black can play knight to a5 to unleash this b7 bishop. And everything gets traded after bishop g5. There comes bishop takes f3, bishop takes e7, bishop takes g2, and king takes g2. Black can play knight c6, and after a move like knight d5, again, everything gets swapped off. After king f8, knight d5, neither side has the advantage and it's just dead equal here. So maybe this is why alpha 0 didn't opt to take this pawn. Instead, alpha 0 now continues to hammer 
at the black squares. And Alpha Zero plays H4 here, just really controlling this G5 square now. Stockfish plays Rook B8, and Alpha Zero plays Knight D5. So Alpha Zero is starting to take control of this position, it seems. Black's position does look very squashed, and it's very hard to get the pieces out. And this e5 pawn just dominates this bishop at the moment. h5 is played by Stockfish, attacking the queen. But Alpha Zero now switches play. They play queen to a4, dropping it to the other side of the board. Knight e6 from Stockfish. This knight looks quite nicely placed there, actually. But now just bishop e3, and this stops any knight d4 ideas at the moment. Stockfish plays knight to b4. And now Alpha Zero continues to dominate the dark squares and decides to take off the e7 bishop. So knight takes e7, rook takes e7. And there's no way now for black to control these dark squares. And now an incredible move. Alpha Zero just parks their rook on d6 and just squashes black's play. Possibly with the threat of playing rook ad1 as well to support in the future. Stockfish plays queen f8. Still trying to offer up this d7 pawn but Alpha Zero doesn't want it. Just plays rook e1 instead. And now Stockfish drops their knight back to c6, possibly trying to protect the a7 pawn. Queen c4 now from alpha 0, and Stockfish plays rook e8. So alpha 0 now has a very active position with very dynamic pieces. And it's just important to say that alpha 0 doesn't really care about material in this position. They just care about their piece play, as you've seen in the other games as well. So play continued. Rook takes d7 with a very active rook now for white. Rook e d8 is played. And now Alpha Zero plays an incredible move and unleashes the potential of this g2 bishop and just gains loads of dynamic play now. So they play rook takes b7 here, sacrificing the exchange. Amazing. Rook takes b7 is played. And now knight g5. So what Alpha Zero has done is just unleashed this bishop upon black. Um, and black now has to be very careful. Knight g5 is played, and after knight takes g5, bishop takes g5. These two bishops are very nicely placed, and white's just eliminated the knight on e6 as well, which was probably black's best minor piece. The knight on c6 is incredibly weak at this moment in time, and black does have some fighting to do to gain some active play now. So they play rook d4, quite a dynamic move in itself, attacking the queen. The queen drops back to b3, and stockfish defends the knight on c6 by playing rook c7. Alpha Zero now crashes in with e6, which is quite a scary move. If black now captures this on e6, they can play rook takes e6, and black is in a very tricky position because there's going to be a discovered check with this queen on b3. Two pieces are attacking the knight on c6, and also the rook's attacking on g6 actually as well. I've not put an arrow on that one. But yeah, taking that e6 pawn is drastically bad. For this reason, Stockfish calmly plays king h7. But now queen f3 is a really nice move, I like this. It just stops black from taking e6 because it's pinned now. It's really hard for black to make a move in this position. If black plays a nothing move like a6, white can play queen takes c6 and after rook takes, just play e7. And the queen's attacked and e8 is threatened as well. And white still has the two bishops. If rook c8, then White can just capture on f8 with the queen, get a queen. Rook captures and just rook e7, and this is great for white now. They've got the two bishops and a really dynamic rook. So again, after a6, can be played queen takes c6, rook takes c6, e7. There's nowhere for black to go. If they play a move like queen e8, let's say, bishop just takes on c6, and after queen captures, again, white can just get another queen and after queen captures, rook captures, so just the piece up. So this just illustrates how bad black's position is in this position. There's no doubt that Stockfish finds incredible defences and they play it's probably the strongest move in the position, just queen e8. Now there's two, a couple of strong moves here. Queen f6 was given by Stockfish itself as a really strong move in this position. After knight d8, white can play e7. After knight e6, the rook can now capture on e6. After f takes, they can play queen f8. Black can play rook d1 check, so throwing in the check. And if white now plays bishop f1, they're actually in a great position. If rook takes e7, queen takes e7, 
queen captures, bishop captures. White now has the two bishops for the rook. So you would expect someone like alpha zero to win this position. Which illustrates how strong white's position is. But I feel like alpha zero found better here. So instead of queen f6, they played bishop to h3. And white's just got really strong pieces in this position. And black's pieces look really uncoordinated. For instance, the queen on e8, look, let's just get this right. It's not very good at all. It's not got any scope. The only decent piece is maybe the rook on d4. But this knight on c6 and this rook on c7 don't do much. They're all trying to protect themselves and protect the king. Queen f8 is played now. So Stockfish is moving backwards. Alpha 0 plays b3. I'm not sure what this move does entirely. Maybe it stops c4 ideas and just locks down black's queen side. f5. And now bishop g2 again because f5 has been played and blocked that bishop in. And the threat in the knight on c6. As we've seen before, queen takes c6 would be ideal because e7 is a massive threat in this position. So black's got to be careful. So they play knight to e7 by Stockfish. And bishop f4 attacking the rook. Queen d8 is played in the game. If rook c8, queen b7 can actually be played with great activity for white. If queen d8, just queen takes a7, gaining some more material. c4, white can play bishop to e5, attacking the rook. If rook d2, white can play pawn takes c4. After rook takes c4, bishop f6, black's under a lot of pressure. The knight's getting attacked twice, so rook c7. And queen a4, stockfish 11 gives white as winning this position with very good peace activity. Mainly because I think it's very hard for black to control these two bishops. They've just got so many good squares. And the dark squares are just dominated by that bishop on f6. It's worth a lot more than three points in that position. So after bishop f4, stockfish actually played queen d8 here. Maybe hoping for white to take on c7, but as we've seen, alpha zero doesn't like to take material. They prefer activity. And just played bishop e5 here. Rook d2 now from stockfish and bishop f1. And after a5 by stockfish, alpha zero plays a great move, I think. a4, just locking down this side of the board now. And c4 can no longer be played. So, so black's queen side is now fixed in a position. Rook a7 is played and bishop c4. So this is really nice now for white. Knight d5 is played and alpha zero now plays rook d1. The reason being that alpha zero now wants to take this rook on d2 off the board. It's black's best piece and it will just give white more domination over the board. Knight b4 is played by stockfish. Captures, captures and now alpha zero has just eliminated black's strongest piece. Bishop f4 now, attacking the queen. Stockfish plays queen e1 check. King g2, and now knight c2. Maybe threatening knight d4 here. But queen d5 gains a lot of activity. And what you'll see here is now that black's king just gets locked into a hopeless position. So Stockfish plays queen e4. They trade queens. But now the bishop g5 and rook a8. Bishop f6. Black's king is just hopelessly trapped in the corner. There's no way to get out now. These two bishops just dominate the side of the board. Knight d4 is played and now e7. So black's king is pinned in the corner, unable to assist in the fight against white's past e-pawn, as Matthew Sadler says. Knight f5 is played by stockfish and bishop b5 now, so e8 is a massive threat. Luckily stockfish has knight d6 just in time. But alpha zero plays bishop c6, attacking the rook. Rook c8 is played, attacking the bishop. And bishop d7 now, attacking the rook once again. If black decides to play something like rook c7 here, attacking the bishop again, they can play bishop e5 and it's hopeless. The only move in this position is actually knight e8. Mainly because if rook takes d7, white can play bishop takes d6. And there's no way for black to defend e8. So knight e8 is the only move. Bishop takes c7. Knight takes c7 and just get a queen for white. And after captures, captures, it's a hopeless position in the end game for black. So after black's been chasing this bishop, they just have to play rook a8 and settle for that. And white now plays f3, just bringing the king into the game. 
the final piece of the puzzle, as you will, and just demonstrating the difference between the two kings in this end game. Black plays knight to e8 to block it up. Bishop g5 just to move away from that horrible knight. And king g8. But still, there's no way for black's king to get in the position at the moment. Alpha 0 takes on e4. Knight c7 is played. Uh, Bishop f4 attacks the knight. And Stockfish plays a rook e8 here. So obviously, Bishop takes c7 would be terrible for white. Just due to... Um, Rook takes e7, so obviously alpha 0 isn't going to fall for that one. So just play bishop d6 to protect the pawn. King f7 now to bring the king in, finally. But here, alpha 0 just takes on e8 check, and the knight takes. But luckily alpha 0 actually has it all figured out. They just play e5 here, and actually black just resigns, and stockfish is adjudicated to have lost the game. Uh, and this is just because white's got a tremendously strong position. I think to the human eye it looks very even but this is just totally lost for um, black here. The reason being is because after the best move, knight g7, white now sacrifices their centre pawns, they can play bishop c7, after the king captures take on b6, after king e6 just take on a5, and after a move like king d5 just play bishop c3. And Black's queenside has been totally decimated here. And this should be an easy win for Alpha Zero. Knight e6, King f3. So White's two pawns up in this endgame. Has a tremendously strong bishop. And this a5 pawn looks like it's just going to run down the board at the moment. So yeah, that was game. Now I've got to be totally honest with you. This type of game just went totally above my head. I don't think I appreciate how strong White's position is here. Because it looks so even, it looks like black still has some activity, but no, it's just completely busted no matter what you play. It just shows how strong these engines are. It just shows how much we've got to learn as well. I think that's the most exciting part. It actually has got me back into chess. But anyway, I hope you really enjoyed these videos. I want to release more in the future for Alpha Zero and the Stockfish games. They're very interesting. Please drop me a like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video, and I'll be with you with more in the future. Thank you very much.